I have a very special opportunity to uh, check out and tell you all about this 1991 Ford Festiva GTA. This belongs to my friend Ben Williams, who bought it from a gentleman in British Columbia who imported it from Japan. It is a Ford Festiva, but it was only sold in Japan. Um, now what's unique about the GTA is they only made 300 of these with the unique um, front bodywork with the round headlights, different fender and grill, and all of them were in this red and white livery. This is serial number 285 of 300. And a lot of people think that the front end is, the white part is just grafted onto the rest of the body, but it is all one piece. They just had this unique coloration. Um, one interesting thing that Ben told me is that these bumper butts um, don't actually go to the frame, they're just kind of decorative. Unlike American Ford Festivas, which were uh, assembled by Kia in Korea using um, Mazda drivetrains assembled in Japan, this one was entirely built in Japan. It is uh, higher quality than the American um, Korean Festivas we received. So they were built by Mazda in Japan and then finished by Autorama, which is kind of a custom company. And so here at the back, we also have the unique bumper, the unique finisher. You can see the Autorama badge here and the GTA logo. And these are the factory wheels that came on it. Ben has put R88 racing tires on it because we're taking it to the track this weekend. But these are the, the wheels and you see it also has the Autorama badge. And being a Japanese vehicle, it is right hand drive. Um, inside, we'll see a, a door card that's a lot nicer than what we're used to in our Korean-American Festivas. It's got this nice uh, fabric that goes all the way around in a different pattern or shape than any of the door cards we got with fabric. It has these larger door pools, which were found in uh, protégés in the U.S. market, but never in Festivas. Now, if we come inside here, you'll see that it has a TAC cluster, which goes up to 180 kilometers per hour. TAC clusters were pretty rare. And these had electric suspension from the factory, which you can change the spring rates just by this little switch here. Ben has opted to put in much better coilovers um, that handle much better than the factory suspension. The seats, you can see, are pretty similar to uh, Mercury Capri seats. They are just super high quality. Um, a big step up from anything we're used to. Another unique thing is none of, none of our Festivas came with these roof handles, so it's cool that it has both of them. And I think maybe somebody saw a picture of the GTA and found out we can do that with ours as well. Also unique bits here on the dash is a dash clock, which were never in Korean American Festivas, um, but we're in the Mazda 121 and other world market cars, and it also has this nice little dash cubby which you can see in there. Oh, this is the cooled dash cubby. So you can see it has AC vents, and these are soda can holders. So you could put three beverages in here and have it cooled by the air AC. So that is just a very unique, cool option. In the back here, we'll find a nice split fold seat, um, a rare option among American Festivas, and here it's standard. and you can just see the really nice quality of the, the cloth in the interior. And then it has cloth on this interior trim piece here, which no American Festivus had, which is just so nice. And the plastics seem to be a much better material. They scratch and fade super easy in our car. It's, it makes sense that this is so much higher quality because this is a, a unique boutique vehicle compared to our um, bargain bin cars, which, you know, Ford told Mazda slash Kia to build as cheap as possible. I guess we'll open up the hood here. So coming around to the front here, we'll open up the hood. And inside, we find a unique engine option. Now this was offered in um, several different options of uh, Japanese market Festivas, but not in any other market, including the, the GTX and the GT. And this is a 
dual overhead cam 1.3 liter uh, BJ engine. So it's a 1.3 liter dual overhead cam. It's kind of a, a smaller um, B60 like you might find in a Capri and um, it's kind of similar to the engine in, in Miata's as well, but smaller. Yeah, you can see this beautiful logo it's got on it. The master cylinder is really unique and how far it sticks out, but I guess that's it's probably adapted because it is a right-hand drive vehicle and things have to fit in certain ways. Smaller battery than we're used to. A W code, which I don't think I've ever seen. Oh, it does have power steering, which is very cool. Here you can see the model designation for to Japan, all the Japanese characters. And of course the J in this stands for Japan rather than Korea. And then you can see the, the normal core support is here. And the, the, the special GTA front end doesn't seem to stick out that much further than that of the, the Festivas we're used to. These are glass H4 headlights. Really nice, really nice stuff. And this just seems to be kind of a, a off-the-shelf turn signal. Notice here with the, the mirrors, they are power, and it has, these are what we call swoopy mirrors in the Festiva community because they're kind of aerodynamic. And these were only available on the 90 LX Festiva in the US. What this has that our Festivas are equipped to do, but none of them had this option in the US is it's got a fuel popper and a trunk popper, which is just so cool. I know it's just such a silly little thing, but it's exciting to me. That's very nice. So thanks for joining me for this fun little walk around of Ben Williams. Ford Festiva GTA 285 of 300, the only one in the United States of America.